Good morning, friends. Welcome to Good Morning Friends Podcast, where we bring the latest news and updates to you, the bride around the world. Welcome, everyone. Today is Saturday, September 3rd. I am William McMasters. And hello from Zimbabwe. I am Stephen Tutani. Brother Stephen, we're back together again. Yes, sir, we are. And something good or better, a whole lot of good (laughs) things are about to happen. (laughs) Uh, Amen. That's exactly right, my friend. Well, you know, I heard a testimony this week, and I've been waiting all week to be able to share it. Ooh, I can't wait to hear it. Uh, I was speaking with Brother Randall Jones, who works in the translation department here at the Jeffersonville VGR office, and he shared with me a testimony about how his grandfather, Brother Warner Vincent, came into the message. He said that Brother Warner had just moved to Jeff in the early 1960s for work, and that he was looking for a church. And he tried different ones around town, but kept feeling like it just wasn't right, and he was never satisfied. Well, his brother Henry Vincent had asked him to go visit the Branham Tabernacle one Sunday morning. Well, they couldn't get inside. The building was packed. The crowds were everywhere. So they had to listen in their car over the radio. Brother Warner said that when they heard that voice say, Good morning, friends, he turned to his wife and said, That's him. It was the first time he'd heard his voice. Praise the Lord. <laughs> his sheep knows his voice. And you know, they've been faithful tape listeners ever since. Oh, glory. The little eagles heard Mama Eagle scream over that barnyard. And That's away exactly they went. Right. <laughs> Amen. You know, and also was an extra blessing he mentioned is he had been trying to quit smoking for years. But after that service, he never touched another cigarette again and never even had any withdrawal symptoms either. <laughs> wow. What a mighty God we serve. (laughs) Amen. You know, just thinking of the impact that that voice had, you know, being his first time hearing it, and it was the phrase, good morning, friends. It settled it right there. He found this pearl of great price. Oh, that's a beautiful testimony, my friend. Thank you so much for sharing that. Absolutely. I'm ready to get started after hearing that. Uh, Me too. A few weeks ago, we introduced our Omega Translation software. This is not just a piece of software. This is a whole system that will change the entire structure of VGR. We can't even scratch the surface of how in-depth this is. For now, we're just going to touch on some of the details of it in this report. To put it plainly, this is a vision that is finally coming true. Starting in its infancy in 2013 as an in-house tool used by VGR Jeffersonville, this software was designed and built from the ground up to make translating the message of the hour as efficient and high quality as possible. What a huge improvement this was, as it took a once complex and manual translation process and it turned it into a simple online system that is now called Omega. It is currently used by 162 different translators representing 63 languages from around the world. To put into perspective the magnitude of growth this tool has generated, VGR has completed more translations between the four years of 2017 and 2021 than all 30 plus previous years combined, dating all the way back to 1983. Wow. What an incredible feat this has been, but it doesn't stop there. That is a staggering fact. Well, truth of the matter is, VGR is always searching for greater ways to get the message into the hands of the people. And Brother Joseph is always encouraging us not only to be on the cutting edge of technology, but to be on the bleeding edge of technology, so that we're using every possible resource to get the message of the hour to the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shortly following the release of Omega, our development team shifted focus to develop a system within Omega that adds suggested translated text for each new sermon that our translators are ready to translate. What that means is now, instead of them having to hand type an entire new translation through their own vocabulary, we're able to automatically pre-populate the translation for them using our new software, which pulls suggested text from a massive library of words available in each specific language. So now the bulk of the work is already done for them, This feature only serves as suggestions for our translators and still requires every word to be reviewed, corrected if necessary, and approved. Then it goes through a proofing process before it is finally signed off on by VGR Jeffersonville and scheduled for release. That's amazing. 
We're so thankful that this process in the Omega system has not only greatly increased the number of translated sermons, but we've seen a proven higher quality of translations with fewer errors than ever before. Where once a single sermon would take months to complete, it can now be done in a matter of days before it is released directly into the hands of the bride. We want to thank the Lord for raising the bar once again, and we cannot wait to see what's next. Amen. In last week's podcast, we talked about an Agapo follow-up trip that our VGR distributor, Brother Lee Kufa, went on. This past weekend, he was out in the bush again on another trip in Garagua, Mozambique, telling about Agapo tablets and encouraging the churches to press play. While he was there, he contracted malaria. With no hospitals in the area, he pushed through the symptoms to complete his mission. By the time he arrived home, his condition had worsened. So they went straight to the hospital to receive medical attention. Please keep our brother in your prayers as he battles through the recovery stages of this sickness. Despite all of this, Brother Lee sent this little testimony in his report. He says, During the meetings, we played the Shona translation of Hear Ye Him 570317. It was amazing to hear God speaking to his beloved bride. After hearing the prophet preaching in their mother tongue, a local leader in his 80s gave his life to Jesus Christ. Wow. Praise the Lord. No matter what the devil tried to do to disrupt those meetings, God still had the victory and brought in another precious soul through his life giving message. Amen. Well, thank you, Brother Lee, for your service and dedication to the work. Your labors are certainly not in vain, and you'll certainly be in our prayers. God bless you. Something else to note on Mozambique, here is one outstanding testimony we received from a minister named Madalicio who lives a few hundred miles from Kanshishi. He often travels 38 miles by foot, deep into the jungles to bring the word of God. One day when he was traveling, he decided to take a shortcut using a footpath, and halfway down the road, he felt a sharp pain in his leg, and when he looked, he saw blood coming out. After seeing what kind of snake had bitten him, He knew that he was in for deep trouble, and chances of making it out of the jungle alive were very slim. The snake was one of the most dangerous snakes in the world, the Mozambican black mamba. The last thing he remembers is seeing a very big black snake slithering back into the grass as he blacked out. Later, the brother gained consciousness, but his whole body started to get numb. He was desperate, and he started praying, Lord, I'm on my way to do your work. Please don't let me die in this jungle. You said in your word that they will take up serpents, and if they drink deadly poison, it would not hurt them. After the small prayer, he started sweating, and then immediately recovered enough to continue with his journey to take the word to the believers. Several days later, he went to the hospital for a checkup, and the doctors were perplexed. They couldn't believe how he had survived the deadly snake attack. The prison ministry has always been an important part of the work we do here at VGR. Over the years, many of you have seen the letters from prisoners that we posted on the Bram.org and read how the message books they received changed their lives and led them to the Lord Jesus Christ. These inmates have nothing, have lost all they had, their family and friends, their homes, their personal lives, because of a wrong decision they've made. But for some... That's what it took for them to find the truth. Despite all the chaos that's been going on in the world today, the prison ministry has steadily continued. VGR sends roughly 20 packages a week to prisoners all over the United States. Witnessing tracts and revelations, life after death, where are the miracles of the Bible, are some of the literature sent out to attract the prisoners to the message of the hour. Message books such as Life Story, The Church Ages, and the revelation of Jesus Christ are also very popular books among the inmates. Once a predestinated seed catches the truth, they can't help but share it with every prisoner that they meet. And so, the demand blossoms for more and more material. Most prisons only accept books or material directly from a publisher, such as Voice of God recordings. 
so we have quite a few loved ones of prisoners ask VGR to send books on their behalf. Churches and individuals with the burden for prisoners also contact us and sponsor books to be sent to prisons in their area. When we receive a first-time letter from a prisoner, we always try to send them a written response to answer any questions they have, and at the minimum, they'll receive a book list and the Mystery of God and Messenger tracks. Since they have no computers or any means to search the message, they heavily rely on VGR to provide them with message quotes and material. We were able to speak with Brother Christopher Wenger, who helps manage the prison ministry here at VGR. It's so encouraging to read the letters that come in from the prisoners that hear about Brother Branham. A statement that's pretty consistent is, I've never heard anyone preach this way before. I can actually understand him. Is there any way that I can know more? And once that fire gets lit, we can just keep feeding it with more of the word. For me, it's just such a rewarding job as they relay some of their struggles and questions and I get to search the message to know what Brother Branham says and how he touches on those subjects, and then we can send him those sermons. I think it helps me just as much as it does them. A vast majority of prisons limit the amount of material received from the outside world. Therefore, we can only send about five books per week. When the inmates get their book list, sometimes they mark every sermon available with excitement because they want it all. Every week we send them five books. With all their free time, they read those five sermons over and over until the next shipment. One prisoner said that he would read the books up to 30 times and receive something new every time. <laughs> That's wonderful. We had one prisoner who had been incarcerated for a long time. He wrote us and said that he had been moved to a low security complex. Well, in that facility, he had access to an Xbox which is capable of playing mp3s. So he asked if any of Brother Branham's sermons were recorded in that format. Now that we have the SD card and the Agapo tablets, we don't have a lot of the single disc mp3s anymore, but we do have a few of the table applications for the computer which are in mp3 format. So we sent that to him hoping it would get through. The letter he wrote back is so precious. It reads, Dear Voice of God, I have no words to express my thankfulness in sending me the DVD tapes. Not only that, but the whole 19-disc The Table Set. It was the first time after 30 years in this message that I have heard the voice of Brother Branham. I am so grateful. Thank you, Voice of God, all the faithful workers of this ministry, all the overseers, and Brother Joseph. For 30 years, you've made sure I had the sermons, but this, The Table are such a blessing and so well received. The facility gave me all of them and they didn't limit them. Amen. Wow, man, I can't imagine. After 30 years of reading the message book, to hear that voice for the first Amen. time, there is no doubt he was having a jubilee. We thank the Lord for this wonderful open door he has supplied to reach this precious soul. As many parts of the world are dealing with droughts, Pakistan has the opposite situation. It is currently the monsoon season and extremely heavy rain has caused massive flooding all over the country. We received word from Brother Shamoon, a local pastor and our VGR office manager in Pakistan, concerning the flooding that is devastating the country. More than 1,100 people have been killed and over 320,000 homes being destroyed. It is one of the country's worst monsoon seasons in over a decade. Shalom. This is Brother Shaman from Pakistan. We are seeking prayers from the believers around the world for our country, Pakistan. It's been a distracting situation in almost 45% of the total area in Pakistan. The monsoon started on the June 24, 2022, and since then it never looked back. The monsoon season turned into the flooding emergency in Pakistan, and the government issued a notice not to leave your home until it is very important. Several areas in the province of Sindh, Punjab, KPK, and the Balochistan, there is no electricity, no food, and no internet connectivity. Every single day, 
since the monsoon started, situation here in Pakistan is getting worse. With the rainfall amount exceeding 500% above normal in some regions, raging floodwaters have swept away over 700,000 head of livestock and 3.6 million acres of crops have been impacted, causing food to be in short supply. Brother Shimon went on to say that at the moment, most of the believers are safe, but there are several pastors and their families who have been forced to leave their homes because of the rising floodwaters. But we still don't know how many more lives have been lost, how many people are sleeping with no roof on their top, no food to eat, but we are still calling upon our Lord to show His mercy upon a country. We know He can do impossible. All we have to do is believe. Therefore, it is our humble request for the believers to keep our country and its situation in your individual prayers. Thank you and God bless you. God bless you, Brother Shamoon. We will be keeping the believers and all of those affected in our prayers. And finally, we receive some truly wonderful and exciting news from our friends in Mexico. They just received their shipment of Agapo tablets in record time. Here's what Brother Francisco Veramontes had to say concerning importing tablets into Mexico. May God bless you, beloved friends. What a blessing it is to be a part of this group of individuals that were chosen to be the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. And even more, to serve our brothers with the message of the hour, previously in books and magnetic tapes, and now on the Agapo tablet. When we knew that there was a shipment of tablets coming into Mexico, we began to pray and praise the Lord for the news, and also to see with the broker the procedure for this new import of tablets. He continues, Due to the constant changes in the procedures of the imports, we would have to hire a laboratory to perform tests to the Agapo tablets, and more information was being required working with our broker. It was going to potentially cost thousands of dollars for this new testing that previously had never been required. We began to pray. Well, as we're often reminded, prayer certainly changes things. The Lord laid upon Brother Francisco's heart to find an alternative way to import the tablets. It turned out to be the fastest shipment ever shipped from Jeffersonville to Mexico, taking just 10 days for the 1,100 tablets to get across the border and safely delivered in Monterey. Praise the Lord. It is wonderful to have a good supply of tablets in each office, and the distributors of Mexico will once again be on the road, driving many miles as they continue in the Agapo tablet distribution project. Well, like all of you, we're under great anticipation for the tape tomorrow. Be watching the Creations website later today for a journaling theme that you can print out and use for your studies and Sunday school. We've also added new YF quizzes for September, A Prophet Like Unto Moses, and Thy Seed Shall Possess the Gate of His Enemy. Well, that wraps up today's episode. Be sure to be looking for updates during the week on Bram.org, WhatsApp, and our Lifeline app. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. Lord willing, we look forward to seeing you next week. And until then, God bless you and shalom. Shalom. Shalom.